this this fella. And shout out to all the white supremacists who are so dishonest and they always seem to disappear when it's their turn. You know what I'm saying? Like they if it was a, a Arab shooter, man, these white supremacists would be all over the place. I told you, I told you so. But now their white hero was uh, nearly killed by who? By another white man. And now they're all absent because these are some dishonest rascals. So here we go. Breaking Mark Zuckerberg, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook just interfered with the 2024 election by wiping Ryan Ruth's account. Users can no longer access his page to see all his anti-Trump pro Kamala Biden posts. Did the FBI order them? So let's see. Okay, so this is this is Ryan Ruth. And clearly he is pro diversity, I suppose, because it looks like there's a bunch of flags there. Most of the ones I recognize are all European flags. I do see the Brazil flag low key. And I also see the Chile flag, or is that the Czech Republic? I'm not as smart as I used to be. And also the Mexico flag. So clearly he's a fan of diversity, a leftist, a liberal. Okay. And then we see him wrapping himself in the American flag. So he considers himself a patriot. He lives in Hawaii, which is fascinating because that's a bit on the periphery as far as America is concerned. Living in Hawaii is like living in Puerto Rico, which is to say these are territories that I don't think are terribly thrilled about being a state. So that's curious. He's from Greensboro, North Kakalaki. And uh, so this is his profile before it was wiped. And now it is not accessible. And this is consistent with government. They lie to you. They hide information from you. Yes, this is very consistent. Breaking Ryan Wesley Ruth, who tried to kill President Trump, was connected to Republican Adam Kurtzing, uh, Kingsinger through his support and fight from Ukraine. Through his support and fight for Ukraine. Heavily brainwashed Democrat. Okay. Owen to Trump won. Okay. Curious. Please tell me who you are and why are you here? Uh, 56. As we can see, this fella has his hair dyed, so he looks like a, a liberal woman. Um, and by the way, shout out to all the grown men who don't do weirdo stuff. If you're a grown man, don't paint your nails, don't dye your hair, don't go overboard and beautifying. It's not necessary. Leave that to the women. From the U.S., the US uh, from North Carolina originally, still live in Hawaii now, so flew all the way from Hawaii here. So the question as far as why so i see it says romania newsweek shout out to romania i've been there many times i'm here so me you know a lot of the other conflicts are gray but this conflict is definitely black and white this is about good versus evil this is a storybook you know any movie we've ever watched this is definitely evil against good i mean we're bad it's curious when people start speaking of good versus evil Let's hear what he's referring to because this is clearly out of context. A situation here where, you know, the U Ukrainians and the rest of the world are caring and kind. And okay, so that's crazy. And any adult has enough experience to know that, well, it's rarely good versus evil. And it's so clear as to who's evil and who's good. And I'll tell you why. Because mostly average people don't support evil. <laughs> you feel me? Uh, there's something called the wisdom of crowds. Even though an individual, an average individual is a fool, once you add them together in a crowd, not in a mob, but in a crowd, and they can you know, give their opinion or they can vote, usually there's some wisdom there. And they're rarely wicked and rarely violent. That is why we have the theory that democracies are not violent. This is not true, um, as we've seen, like what? what masquerades as democracy, which is typically republics, these are very violent. And even more accurately, in the case of America, it's not a republic, it's a plutocracy, which is say a government run by the wealthy. And there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. In fact, it's a beautiful thing. And my chief goal is to get enough money to fly private internationally, you dig, which ain't cheap. So I think wealth is a beautiful thing. But the problem is that in America, we have those who are wealthy and wicked. Yes, wealthy and wicked. And generous and, and unselfish and and take care of one another. And it's just a matter of, you know, we need to stand up for that. That is the most important thing in the world is just to show human beings that we're kind and we're caring. This dude sounds like a fruitcake. That's the most important thing in the world. Show human beings that we're kind and caring. First off, you fool, NATO is an aggressive military organization. And you should know that it's an aggressive military organization. Look who the members are. They're the former colonial powers. They're the, some of the most wicked nations on earth that have subjugated the peoples of the earth through violence, 
R A P E, mass R A P E, genocide, and much else. France, evil history. Spain, wicked history. Britain, cruel history. And that's NATO. So, what is the likelihood that it's a righteous organization? Please stop. Oh, don't forget the Germans. Don't forget the Germans. So, come on, man. This dude's a real Looney Tune. And this is very common, especially among white supremacists, is that they'll say things like the following, which are completely just unbelievably ridiculous. Those are like, they're like, the coloreds are, they're violent. The coloreds, it's like, bro, you damn near murdered every colored from the Americas. Like the whole continent is empty because you depopulated it through murder. You can't call anyone violent. You guys used to cut off the limbs of kids in the Belgian Congo of children and then take photos of it. Like you were proud. You take photos of it with you and the kids limbless in America. You used to hang black males and cut off their penis and scrotum and put it in their mouth and then hang them and then have a picnic, which is to say you'd eat food around a hanging dead corpse. This is true. Did you know that they used to do that? Yeah. Yeah. They used to do that. Have a dead black man hanging with his uh, privates cut off and they would sit and have a meal, the whole family. This is a true story, white Americans. So anyways, now all of a sudden, these are the nicest people in the world, right? NATO's good. The Germans are positive. The French are, hey, hey, we're good guys. Uh, The British are no longer colonial. Uh, The Germans are no longer like uh, mentally, like psychotically racist. These are all good people and they're fighting for the good of the planet Earth. Who buys that? It doesn't even seem realistic. (laughs) <laughs> like word and then here's the comical part the russians are so evil well when i go to former soviet union countries some of them have been completely converted uh, and brainwashed mostly through american capitalism latvia they're convinced that they are westerners now oh man they love the west they despise russia which is comical because most latvians all speak russian if it we're talking about like my mother's generation they are fluent in russian most of the latvians my age and in their 20s also speak Russian and they speak great Russian. And in fact, this is also true of the Ukrainians and Ukrainians. I know they say that they dream in Russian when they want to write a beautiful piece of literature, they would write it in Russian as opposed to Ukrainian. Uh, The Russian influence there is significant. And in fact, there's a lot of Russian and Slavic blood running through these various peoples. And many uh, nation states, you talk to people like uh, in Uzbekistan, they miss the Soviet Union. They miss those days when the level of education was, uh, you know, reasonably high and there was pride and there was order. You talk to a lot of people, they miss those days. And I'm not saying this to say that the Soviet Union was good. I don't like autocratic regimes. I definitely don't like communism. And I despise big government. But I also despise lies. And we need to bring a little bit of truth forward, huh? But I'm just pointing out that this this psychopath here, this adult male, adult white male with his hair half dyed uh, blue, uh, is telling us that, you know, NATO and America is on the side of righteousness. Please stop it. All right take care of one another and that the world is united so that we feed each other and make sure that you know we, we all move forward as as one collective whole unit so you know we- and see this is a lie too when he's saying you know we all feed each other and we move together as one collective whole unit well that's fantastically strange because american capitalism is actually not about we. Let me break this down for you. And I love capitalism, but capitalism is incompatible with democracy. Democracy is a system based on equality, democracy, equality, equal rights. Capitalism is based on hierarchy, inequality. Some would be wealthy, some would be poor, some would be middle class. It's based on differences, you see? And he's talking about collective, like we're all in this collectively together. Well, you hear the term collective, you typically hear this with the communists. That's a communist uh, concept. We're not all in this together. Uh, In fact, American capitalism is also based on rugged individualism. Pull yourself up by the bootstrap. Yourself, dummy. Not everyone else pulling you up. Not the community holding you up. You getting it in for yourself. Your individual family firm making that bread for yourselves, okay? So what is Brody talking about? We feel the pain of of one country's failure and their conflicts, and we enjoy the successes of of other countries that are doing good, and and we all work together. This dude is talking about like world governments. Like, bro, we're Americans. We're American citizens. We don't need to feel the pain of other countries suffering, and we don't need to feel the successes of other countries being 
outperforming us. We're Americans. We need to worry about what we're doing and that we're on top. That's all there is to that. That is the whole point of a nation, actually. Right. For some reason, Russia does not grasp this concept that we're we're all one unit. This guy's a total psychopath. He said Russia doesn't grasp this concept. Are you not aware of America's attempt to overthrow the leaders in Libya, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Syria, in all of Latin America, especially Venezuela as of late? What are you talking about? This guy is not making any sense. And that's a sad reality is that, you know, there's lunacy and there's stupidity. And sometimes there you can confuse. You don't know which one it is, but he might be suffering both. And we have to get along and work together. And, and, and this boy is so kindergarten. Human being. This is, he is so kindergarten in his, in his thinking. So many units available to us, Georgian, Crimean, uh, Ukrainian territorial defense, foreign legion. We have, you know, so many paramilitary groups. I can put, I put a 74 year old Japanese guy in a unit. So, you know, we have girls in units. So we have two, two girls that are in, in the, we need to, we need to be cheerleaders just being here and saying, Hey, I support the Ukrainians and I support. That's funny. He's talking about supporting the Ukrainians just this week. Uh, some Ukrainians tried to steal several thousands of do uh, dollars from me. It's amazing. <laughs> the Ukrainians. No, if, if you know an individual Ukrainian person who's a good person, fantastic. But supporting the Ukrainians, that's extraordinary. We got Americans don't even support the Americans. We have an American government doesn't support the Americans. So how are you supporting the Ukrainians? What? Stop it, man. Come on. Knock it off. Yeah, he he's he's not well mentally. There's just no doubt about that. Fella is not well. So this is a picture of him right here in D.C. and Kiev to provide soldiers for the war effort. Wow. I wouldn't be surprised if he is, um, uh, he's been a, on the payroll of some liberal outlets. Would not be surprised at all in the least bit. Thank you for that information. And, you know, there's some persons that the government censors. You know, they have legitimate claims, they have legitimate ideology. He is not one such person. He's just like a, a, a dimwit but he's a proactive dimwit. That's the problem here. He's proactive. We have a lot of persons on the, the side of goodness who are uh, have good values, but they're inactive or they're reactive. We really need to be proactive. That's the thing. 